So now that the dust has settled on a lot of the April Fool's changes, I'd actually like to take a look at what changes here, with all joking aside, are actually pretty interesting and worth experimenting with. I'm using my new stream deck here, hold tight. There you go. Because we actually have a list here, thanks to this Reddit post from Spider Panther, of the list of April Fool's changes in the past that have actually been implemented in the live game. Uh, we'll go down the list of these, look like the direct grenade hits, heal from War with Baptiste, uh, Bastion weapon spread removed, the D.Va mech actually calling uh, and killing people, Storm Arrows ricocheting, charge now has 200% more steering, so you have more control. Uh, Soldier 76 can aim for headshots if you aim the crosshair at their head. And the Zarya particle barrier and protective barrier now on a shared cooldown uh, as of Overwatch 2. Uh, but I think it's really interesting to kind of take a look at this and be like, okay, which of these changes would actually make a lot of sense in the live game as it is? And I've got a list of a couple of things that are at least worth spitballing, even if they are a little bit silly. I think the vast majority of these changes are more about, oh, that would be fun, and not necessarily this is something that the character desperately needs, but I do think that they're worth experimenting with. And this is one of them right here. So the Diva Booster change, uh, less so with the, the, the ability to cancel, but more so with the fact that you can Diva Booster backwards, I think is definitely something that we're going to want to experiment with more. Um, there's a lot of situations when, I don't, there's not, there's not a lot of situations when this would be super, super useful, but being able to disengage a fight without having to open yourself up to being shot would be pretty cool, as well as offering some text, the ability to kind of control and fly through midair is something that we haven't really had before with Diva. And this is like one of those at least in my impression, relatively harmless changes that could make the character a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun to play. And whenever we're looking at some of the implementations of previous April Fool changes, it was stuff like this. Relatively harmless, could be fun to play with. Now, one of the, I think, interesting balance ones is the Doomfist change. And it's not the empowered quick melee. It's the ability to move faster or even just the normal speed with empowered punch or with block. One of the weaknesses of Doomfist right now is that he doesn't really have a parry mechanic, doesn't really have a way of dealing with CC outside of just avoiding it with his abilities. What well, the problem is, is that there's one ability that not only keeps him in one place, but slows him down as well. So you're not actually moving, you're actually slowing yourself down. And that's just not an, a very good thing to be doing as Doomfist. And I actually think that introducing some form of speed with uh, the power block, even if it's just like normal 100% movement speed, would make it a little bit harder, uh, provide more options for the Doomfist to avoid crowd control, some of the easy crowd control like Sleep Dart, Mag Grenade, and so on. I see this as a, a net win for Doomfist. Now, again, how bad is Doomfist right now? Does he need these changes? I don't know. Um, but if this is, would be a great quality of life change that if we needed to tweak balance after the fact, because uh, this will make Doomfist stronger, we could always do that. But I think this is a good change. Uh, the Junker, Junker Queen 1, excuse me, was fun. Uh, it just was, I think, in terms of extremes, maybe not quite what we would need. What I would look like if there was some way to maybe work with this with like the interact key, I'm not going to get with the specifications, just to have a little bit of verticality. Like, I don't think she needs this much verticality, but being able to pull yourself up just a little bit, just like boom, just like honestly, like um, almost like, like a double jump height, like with, with Junker Queen, would be pretty cool for giving her just a little bit of verticality. Like, let's say that you could use your knife here and then just pull yourself up like that. Like that level of verticality, I think would be pretty balanced. I don't think you'd want a lot of horizontal mobility. I don't think that's necessary or balanced. It's considering she already has shout and a reasonable amount of range. But you know, you know me, I'm always going to want some form of verticality. But having some way to incorporate this would be pretty fun. The rest of one was fun as well in terms of the explosion with the javelin, um, and as well as the impact or the uh, the excuse me the ricochet. I just don't think she's in a position where that would be something you'd want to do right now. Maybe something long term, but right now, not right now. Uh, and I think I feel the same for Roadhog. I don't think we would want this from Roadhog right now because everyone hates Roadhog. But I do think actually having a much more tossable pig pin and one that actually does a little bit of damage and impact is a pretty cool idea and, and something that I was surprised that wasn't incorporated more into the original ability, uh, but I, I'm a fan with it. Sigma is a cool idea and concept, but it's just not for this character. So having that whole like landing damage thing is something that I think we'll probably see, maybe you see in future characters, it's a cool idea, like having a homing, not a homing rocket, but uh, having something that can kind of go through the air and you can kind of target, it's a cool idea. I just don't think Sigma necessarily needs it. The Winston, uh, which I can't really demonstrate right now, but it was basically the chain lightning with this alternate fire, was also an interesting idea. I just don't think it's necessarily necessary. I'll talk about redundant phrasing. Uh, but I think maybe just having it do actual damage, like 60, 65 damage instead of 50, because it hasn't been skilled, would be a better idea. But it's an interesting idea. I don't hate it. Bastion. Now, this actually was kind of interesting because this was something that we talked about a lot about in our DPS rework was incorporating some way for Bastion to do crit damage and then lowering the damage he does overall, as well as maybe reducing the amount of ammo that he has. Um, this is kind of what we wanted. And now its execution maybe feels a little bit clunky here. Um, by the way, how loud is this? Is this too loud? Okay, it's very loud. Sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, but I think the, the, the implementation of this is a little bit clunky, but the idea is cool. Now, the shotgun thing, 
It feels a little clunky as well. But again, I think that this is like the right direction to go with the character. It's just going to need a little bit more tweaking for sure of like how does it actually implement. I wouldn't be surprised to see Bastion going in this direction in the future though. Um, but yeah, this whole like concept of having a shotgun is pretty neat there. Okay, Genji idea was fine, but I, I just don't think it's going to be incorporated. Probably not balanced whatsoever. I think Junkrat idea was interesting in implementation, which is like the, the alternating fire to kind of detonate your bombs whenever. I just don't, it felt a little clunky and I don't think this is something that you're going to want to implement. Uh, Far one as well, pretty interesting. I actually think this one could be maybe a little bit more balance related. Maybe it's okay. But I think the whole concept of like having a flying character is that there needs to be some level of downplay and the ability to do that maybe is a little bit unbalanced. Uh, maybe I'm overthinking this one. It certainly feels a lot of fun to do. Uh, but you know, I think you'd have to t test that one a little bit more extensively to see if it actually ends up working out okay. Reaper, fun if there was situations where like, Firing both shotguns is appropriate. Like maybe, I don't know if there is, I don't know, maybe there is a spread mechanic that like encourages you to shoot one gun than the other. Uh, but the idea is a little bit having like Malga where you lose a little bit of your accuracy with firing both. Like there's some nuance here, like having like one shotgun fire to be more accurate could be cool. I don't know exactly how that's implemented, but it's an interesting idea. I also think the Sojourn Disruptor Shot idea is cool and definitely a nice little quality of life change to be able to tap it to stop wherever you want it to be. At first, I thought that this reduced the skill ceiling of the character a little bit. Uh, it's kind of nitpicky, it doesn't really matter. But I actually think that it just gives you more options of where you can use it, which I think is almost always a good choice when it comes to actually increasing skill ceiling because whenever there's more choice, then there's more skill. Uh, so I think that that's a definitely a good idea. And I think the soldier idea is interesting in concept. Again, I'm not taking these changes too seriously, guys, obviously. Uh, but I think it is kind of funny having more spread, but you can run and gun. Uh, I think this is something that would be worth actually unironically maybe testing. I would also like to see how it would be, you guys have talked about, you've heard me talk about Soldier 76 and like the whole concept of a stem pack that you can heal on the move. A very small heal over time maybe. Uh, but I think that that would be something, that's the worst part of Soldier's Kit is its healing station. I mean, come on guys, 18 second cooldown. Uh, and, and really a character with a sprint in a healing station, you have a lot of times where you're like, oh no, I didn't need healing station there. Um, oh no, I did need healing station. It's just awkward to have something like this that you want to, when you have a character that also runs. It feels like very counterintuitive. I think just significantly reducing the heal over time and introducing some sort of stem pack that you could do on the move would also be a good change, similar to kind of what he has here. Uh, just good, honest fun. I honestly think that this is pretty harmless. I don't like Torbjorn that much as a character, but it's fun. It's inoffensive. It doesn't make the turret broken necessarily. Uh, it definitely adds a little bit of dynamic and a little bit of nuance to this character, which he desperately needs without really making him like broken, which is great. So I, I'm, I'm down for it. Um, and then off of that point, let's move to the support. So most of the support stuff I think was pretty silly and and not really something that we'd want to see in the game. There are two, two exceptions. One of which was the sound barrier. So I think I can't really do it right now because I don't have ult. Um, but the idea of like having sound barrier provide a little bit of a boop upwards is kind of an interesting concept for a, for an ultimate. Uh, it does open up more playmaking opportunities. Maybe we'd have to keep an eye on how strong that boop is. Uh, but think of the combos that you could do with chaining sound barrier ultimate into uh, a boop of your own. Maybe that'd be broken, but it would definitely add like again a little bit of extra skill ceiling out there uh, for a support that I think is already pretty high skill ceiling. I think that'd just be cool. Maybe just something worth trying. Again, it's kind of like the Diva Mech thing, but a little bit less cheesy, a little bit less cheesy and definitely opens up some playmakings. And then the Iliari thing. So obviously like the being powered in the sun is pretty silly, but the whole concept, if I remember correctly, let me look at the patch notes here. Uh, it talks a little bit about, let me pull it up really quick here. I'm going to use again, my stream deck here. And it talks about, where are we at here? Oh, we passed it. Okay. It talks a little bit about how when she's using her captive sun, uh, moves faster, charges her solar rifle faster, always charges the full damage power, movement speed increased, attack charge, healing charge, recharge. I think this is kind of a cool mechanic. This is something I've been wanting in Overwatch for as a support ultimate for quite a long time. Maybe not a self buff, kind of some of a nano boost, but just in general, like having more powered up, doing what you do, but doing it better. Uh, having that installed into your ultimate, I think is pretty cool. Now, does that need to be in your ultimate? I don't necessarily think so, but I think Iliari is one of the supports that's woefully lacking dynamics and like nuance of the kit right now. It would be interesting for me to see some, maybe a cash out with a pylon, maybe incorporating it into her shift right now, but having some mechanic where Iliari could kind of overheat herself for two or three seconds and then reduces her efficacy afterwards. You could use that as a defensive cooldown, but also you could use it as an offensive cooldown to allow you to put out more pressure. And we always want to see that with cooldowns. Cooldowns that can be used offensively or defensively and incorporating some sort of like, again, a little bit of extra movement speed, a little bit more extra offensive power, probably not necessarily buffing up her sustain. I think her sustain is strong enough as it is, 
Uh, but finding some way to incorporate that would be kind of interesting for this character and definitely add a little bit of nuance. Again, I'm not sure exactly how that would look, but I would definitely want to see that experimented with a little bit more. But overall, I think a really fun April Fool's things, a lot of just really silly and really fun things, regardless of whether they're actual balance things. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a couple of these things going live. Uh, I think the Doomvis block one is a big one that I would love to see. Uh, maybe the Lucio one is something silly that we see continuing moving forward. Maybe the Bastion one is kind of a hint at something that they're working at behind the scenes. Uh, but yeah, you never really never know. Uh, let me know, what do you guys think? What, what were the changes that you think that might be fun, maybe not in the current implementation in April Fools, but maybe something worth experimenting with a little bit more. Any thought-provoking changes, any quality of life stuff, or it's just dumb, but it's fun. It's good, honest fun, like the Torbjorn uh, turret. So anyway, let me know what you guys think, uh, and I'm going to press my end record button because I'm going to train myself to use these hotkeys. And...